Hello Aquarius, thank you for joining me for your weekly forecast for week commencing the 13th of August. Now of course last week there was that partial solar eclipse in your sector of relationships which is going to prime up some wonderful opportunities in the months to come. But it did link into tiny Pluto, the planet that really has been creating a psychological stir in your situation since 2008. And that link continues the quincunx on Monday and Tuesday of this week. So it's possible that things can come into the open that you're not expecting in a relationship. And also with Mercury tracking backwards, the potential for crosswires continues. And also the North Node is inverting as well, also in the seventh house of partnership and relating. However, the great news is that by the end of this week, Mercury goes forward. It won't come out of shadow until the 2nd of September. In other words, return to the point where the retrograde began, which could be crucial for some uh, interactions and discussions. But I think generally there's going to be a sense by the end of this week of things lightening up a bit. It is true that Mars inverts out of your sign and into the sign of Capricorn on Monday. And this can be tricky. Over the next month, you may be surprised by some turbulent emotional energies. You may be a bit up and down, sometimes feeling quite cross, at other times feeling a little tearful, especially to do with any past hurts and angers that have never been resolved. But it is also true that your modern ruler of Uranus continues to clash with Mars all through this week, but just on a disassociate basis. I think on the whole, it's possible that this still means that anything to do with your desire and will to create a reality for yourself can be affected by sudden and unpredictable events in your emotional life, your family, information, anything to do with where you live. Just things can be continually chopping and changing, maybe within yourself. But I just think by the end of this week, there will be a greater sense of clarity Uranus is still forging a great link with your traditional ruler of Saturn. So tune in to your inner capacities. There may be past skills, talents, resources that you've got that you're not necessarily recognising that you can bring to the party now, but just in a completely different way. And it may be linked to your emotions. It may be linked to how you think about yourself, your self-worth. It may be linked to how you work. But some kind of changes and fluidity around your emotional being and outlook are certainly possible. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Thank you for joining me. I'd love it if you would like or comment, or if you've yet to do so, subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Hello Aquarius, thank you for joining me for your sun or ascendant forecast for August 2018. A lot of astrologers are going to be talking about, on YouTube particularly, the number of retrogrades there are this month. And it is true, your co-regents of Saturn and Uranus, at least from the 7th of this month, are going to be tracking backwards. And it's also true that Pluto is in rewind, and both Saturn and Pluto are going to be joined by Mars on the 13th, also in this very sensitive 12th house. So I do feel that as far as Aquarius people are concerned, there is some merit in thinking very carefully about what these retrogrades mean. The 12th house transits that Saturn and Pluto are going through are really quite challenging. If you think about it, Pluto is about revelations, but it's also about secrets. It's about power, but it's also about transformation. It's about the underworld. It's about betrayal, but it's also about ruthless desire. So that's a lot to put in the 12th house, which is very much to do with our past, to do with our fears, to do with our anxieties. And then of course, Saturn joined this location on the 17th of December last year. And Saturn, although it is the co-ruler of Aquarius, and therefore gives the more traditional side of Aquarius uh, activity, the duality between the more traditional side and the modernity which comes from the zany energies of Uranus, well, Uranus too, uh, or Saturn too, I beg your pardon, that, of course, is tracking backwards. Now, in the 12th house, it is going to continue to be quite a tough old transit. I've just got to be truthful about that, rather than sort of 
be fuzzy about it. And it's about another two years that this is yet to run. But at the end of that two years, you and I will have completely transformed who we are and will have a much healthier understanding of ourselves. We will have cleared up a lot of old debris. We'll have come to terms with a lot of aches and pains, especially of the emotional kind. And we'll move into the future as Saturn enters the sign of Aquarius with a much clearer understanding of who we are. But there is no doubt that with Mars stirring things up in Aquarius for the first two weeks of this month and still clashing with our modern ruler of Uranus, that there can be some tensions, some frustrations, particularly with people close to us, particularly with things to do with our home, or if there are any emotional frustrations, these two could seem really quite hot to handle. Now, if you've been tuning in, you all know that I've been suffering with rheumatoid arthritis. And this did come on, not quite in the middle of May, but it certainly was manifesting itself around about from March. And this is uh, an aspect which really speaks out to the condition I'm suffering, because fourth house is about structure and foundations in my body. First house is about the body itself and about... Uh, overheating in some ways. So I'm kind of living testimony that that's a pretty tough uh, right angle and it has been going on since about the second week of May uh, on the basis of a three degree orb between the exact square. So we've got three more weeks of that this year, despite of this month, despite the fact that Mars is going to invert back into the sign of uh, Capricorn on the 13th. So Mars moving into the 12th house can stir things up even more. So any past debris that Saturn and Pluto have been probing and creating restrictions around or creating mischief, perhaps people have been coming forward in a less than pleasant way. And we've been finding out a lot about who we can really trust and re rely upon. Well, Mars moving into the 12th house can see things that we've been considering in a more reflective way become much more explosive with uh, energies uh, being quite choppy in terms of emotions. So just be conscious of this stuff. This is the real astrology. I read about deep astrology from the Leo King. Well, isn't all astrology about deepness? Or I read, read about the wonderment of Jupiter from sunshine people that do YouTube astrology. I just try to be real and tell you about the planets in a fair way, which doesn't, isn't fearful, it's just real. So what are the opportunities this month? Well, there's a fantastic one, to be honest, right at the start of this month, because the Sun from the 3rd to the 10th is squaring up with Jupiter. Now, Jupiter is a planet that requires some care, and ironically, I actually have this aspect in my natal horoscope. And people who know me well would sound quite an enthusiastic person, if a little bit shy. Um, and if there is something that I really like, whether it's a track that grips me or someone I think is just the real deal or food I really like, I'll be keen to share that with the people I truly care about. So the square can be very positive. It can also make us very generous. So the sun is in the seventh house, which is about relationships, and uh, Jupiter is in the tenth house uh, in, on the solar horoscope for Aquarius, which is all about work. And it's about the people we interact with in our worldly interactions. So there's an opportunity between the 3rd and the 10th to meet someone and make a fantastic impression. Just don't try too hard. Don't overgild the lily. Don't say something or pledge something that you can't follow up with a firm action. And you can really turn this to your benefit. Now, of course, on the 7th, although Uranus goes into a retrograde, could make you think a bit more about some of the freedom you've needed. One minute being close, one minute being a bit more up close uh, to the people we care about. I do feel it's Venus's move that day into the sign of Libra on the triplicity of air, which is wonderful. If you're born right at the start of Aquarius like I am, ooh, that's going to be a delightful few days for having fun and just being with the people that we really like to hang out with. But Venus moving through this location is also about travel. It's also about opening our minds and it's also about being open to people from very different backgrounds and cultures to us. Now, if you're a very Uranian Aquarius, who's very much attuned to people who are different, then 
this may be uh, an echo of how you are anyway. If you're a much more Saturnian Aquarius, then it can be uh, a call to action to try to put some of your your more traditional way of thinking and being to one side, be a bit less fixed, the, the, obviously the uh, quality of Aquarius, and be a bit more flexible, go with the flow, and just see what happens when it comes to invitations to socialise, be with different people, especially if you're single, just see where it might lead. Now, the 11th is obviously the big day of the month because we have a partial solar eclipse in Leo. So this is really exciting. An opportunity to bounce back from some of the challenges of the total lunar eclipse in Aquarius, which is actually happening today as I record this, because I am late doing these, which I apologise for due to my health issues that I've had recently. But you know, this is an opportunity to interact in that skillful way for, to be a bit more dispassionate than some other signs, because it gives us the gift of seeing other people's viewpoints. But... This is partial solar eclipse is also asking you to embrace your viewpoint. And if you've got skills, qualities, alluring energies, having the confidence to go out and interact with others. Now, of course, you'll be thinking, Patrick, you haven't mentioned Mercury yet. And it's true, Mercury is tracking backwards. And we all know that Mercury retrograde can be a right pain. But it can also provide opportunities. I really believe this. So although there may be some cross wires this month, through to the 17th, before Mercury goes direct on the 18th, there also can be something that can be unraveled, a puzzle can be solved around a relationship that has got some benefits to it, but for some reason or another there's been some confusion, people haven't quite understood where one another are coming from, so work it is really the encouragement here. But Mercury retrograde, it is possible that if you go to an interview, someone could misunderstand where you're coming from. Or you start chatting someone up in a bar, they may feel that you're trying a bit too hard when you're actually being ultra laid back. And in fact, may not even be sure if you're that interested. Those kind of glitches obviously can happen. So if you're trying to arrange anything that's pretty formal, just ensure that you check out with the other person, send them an email and say, are you good to meet on a particular day at so-and-so time? so that they know that that was what was agreed, and that way you can mitigate and limit the more onerous implications of Mercury's retrograde. Now, on the 18th, Mercury goes forwards, but it doesn't emerge from shadow until the 2nd of September. So a bit of realism. Yes, things can really sort themselves out to a larger degree, but perhaps around a very important relationship, it may take a little longer. And perhaps you're going to need the benefits and the influence of the sun, which moves on the 23rd into the deep psychological eighth house of your situation. And because it's in the sign of Virgo, details and precision and really looking at things, at the minutiae of things, is actually going to be very helpful. Now, there is a full moon on the 26th, which suggests that anything to do with finances may need some care, balancing your incomes and outgoings in terms of everyday costs against your longer-term planning. But the full moon does intersect the great link between Uranus and also uh, Saturn that I told you about earlier. So I think this full moon can be largely quite helpful as long as you're working at your resources and conscious of what they are. So... In the case of Aquarius, I've got to be honest, some of the people that are going to be talking a lot about these retrogrades may well have a point. It's not necessarily going to be an easy second half of the month, but it just depends on how hard you've been working on yourself. Remember, Pluto's been in the 12th house since 2008, and if you've really been uh, working hard on your personal development, your spiritual development, the enlightenment of who you are, this won't be such a challenging month at all. It could be that your insights, your psychological understanding of others, and let's be honest about it, Aquarius people are usually brilliant at being armchair psychologists. This will help you to uh, anticipate problems, understand where people are coming from, not take things personally, not create dramas in your mind. It really could be very helpful to you. But Mars moving back into the area, into the 12th house, can just bring a bit more sensitivity to the more forceful dyn dynamism of Mars. So that is one that I do feel is going to need a bit of care. 
it's been a real pleasure being with you. I do sincerely apologise for being so late. I will try to do better next month as the medication and all the good stuff that I'm taking kicks in. I'm very grateful for any suggestions you may have made. I have listened to a lot and have changed my diet and I am taking some important supplements. But for now, good luck. I'd love it if you would like or comment on this video or if you've yet to do so, please subscribe to my channel, Real Astrology. Thank you. Hello, thank you so much for watching my video. I'd love you to join me at my Horoscope Ace app. You can find this at www.horoscope-ace.com. You can use it through Android, iOS, Apple or Facebook. Check out your Ascendant or your Moon site or download your free birth chart. There's all your favourite videos, plus there are daily, weekly, monthly and yearly horoscopes for general, love, Chinese and Indian astrology. If your passion is tarot, there's my brilliant three card money or love tarot readings too. And it's all there at www.horoscope-ace.com. Thank you.